Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. We're about to embark on a dark journey. A journey through the terrifying passages of a distorted mind. Man's mind is filled with dark passages that lead through a labyrinth of horror, from which at times there is no return. Come with me as we probe the darkness for ghostly images. Come to the house of Cain. Here we will search out the secret as kept the old house shrouded in a mantle of fear. Who is Cain, you ask? He appears to be an ordinary man like most of us. But here at the old house, isolated from the 20th century, a strange turbulence swirls around him. Cain! Cain! Where are you? Here, Agatha. I'm here. I told you to stay in the house. You're not needed here. Where have you been? In the stone house. Horrible odor in the dungeon. One of the prisoners went mad, set fire to a cell. Ludwig and I dragged him out. We had to calm the others. We used... You tell me. I don't want to know what you do with them. Please. I don't want to know what you do. mystery drama, Them, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Ralph Goodman and stars Alan Hewitt and Jordan Charney. Our story begins in a small, crowded courtroom. The jury is filing in. They have reached a decision on the charge of manslaughter. The defendant, Charles Schiller, darts a quick, apprehensive look at his frail wife, Karen, who has stood steadfastly by him during his ordeal. He then stands to face the 12 men and women who have been chosen to decide his fate. The murder, if it is to be called that, was accidental. Charles Schiller testified to this. The evidence seemed conclusive. Let's move in a little closer. The foreman of the jury has just risen. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, have you reached a verdict? We have, sir. How say you? Do you find the defendant guilty or not guilty? Not guilty. <gasps> Come, Agatha. Once again, a mockery has been made of justice. Let's get out of here. Yes, King. As with the others, I find this man guilty. But if a jury found him innocent... I am not influenced by emotion, as are these incompetents chosen to serve on juries. Remember, Agatha, I have been both lawyer and judge. Who is better qualified to decide a man's guilt or innocence? Come. We must inform Ludwig. That man must pay for his crime, as did the others. But, Cain... I said, come, Agatha. We have listened to every bit of evidence presented in this trial. A murder has been committed. I have found the defendant guilty on all counts. It is up to us to see to it that justice will be served. you two. This is last call. Breakfast is served. We're coming, Mom. Dad's giving me a piggy ride on his back. <laughs> oh, more like a ride around the road. <laughs> Easy, Jim. You're strangling. Oh, me. let's be careful with Daddy now that he's back from that awful courtroom. Home with us again. Well, now you two sit down. We've got toast and boiled eggs and... Boiled eggs? Mm-hmm. Ugh. Oh. I'll just take a piece of toast. And anyways, I'm not hungry, okay? <laughs> All right, then take a piece of toast. <gasps> Maybe you'd better take two. Okay, Dad. I gotta run anyway. I'm supposed to meet the guys at the schoolyard. Toast is perfect for eating to running. <laughs> oh, it's so good to have you home. And to have that nightmare behind us. No, let's not think about that or talk about it again. All I'm interested in now is, is having that phone taken out so I can spend a quiet Saturday with my wife. Hello? No, 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 you didn't. Yes, yes, I'd like very much to be included. 1215? Fine. Uh, where is it to be held? Oh, no, 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 that, that's not necessary. I have my own car. I can just... 
Well, all right, if you want to. I'll be ready at noon, yes. Goodbye. Who was that? Well, I don't know, really. I neglected to ask. A friend of Warren's, another lawyer. Some of his associates are giving Warren a surprise luncheon today to celebrate his winning my case. I wish I had thought of it. Well, you did call him to thank him, dear, twice last night. Oh, I know, I know, but a luncheon, what a wonderful idea. Mm, and they've asked you to come. It's almost the same as if you'd thought of it. Well, not quite, but I'm glad someone did. It must be a really fancy party. They're sending a limousine for me. Oh, how posh. <laughs> <laughs> now, look, I, I know we, we planned the day together, darling, but well, after all the work Warren did for me... I'd like very much to go. Darling, of course you have to go. Where's it to be? Well, the man didn't say. Well, actually, it doesn't matter. They're sending the car. I'll let the driver worry. I'd better shave. I thought you just did. True. But I've never been picked up by a limousine before. Oh, Charles. <laughs> oh, it's good to have you home again. Agatha, almost twelve. Yes, Kane. Oh, please stop pacing. They'll be here. Ludwig has always brought them. He has never failed you. The uh, transcripts, the murder trials we've judged thus far, where are the transcripts? Here, Kane, on the desk. There is no need to show the poor man the transcripts. Ludwig will bring him in as he has the others. I know you have told me over and over what we do is right. Ah, but in my heart... Sentimental claptrap. That's what got him off of the trial. One does not judge a case with a heart, but with the mind. Here, look at these transcripts. I've gone over them word by word, and in each case the jury has been wrong, I have been right. The limousine. You are right in one thing, Agatha. Ludwig does what he has to do and does it well. Yes, yes, he's brought us our honored guest. Let them in. I will join you presently. I have work. Yes, Kane. Uh, one moment, Ludwig. I am coming. Ah, good afternoon, young man. I am sorry to have kept you waiting. Uh, take his hat, Ludwig. And if you will please... Follow me, sir, to the study. I appreciate your hospitality. My name is Charles, Charles Schiller. Yes. Yes, I know. Now, if you will come this way. The halls are rather dark and dreary. What is this place? I mean, your chauffeur was not very talkative. I still don't know the gentleman's name who sent the car for me. Oh, it's Mr. Kane. This is his estate. Kane, Kane, I see. Is he a lawyer? He's a judge. Ah, oh, Mr. Schiller, I see you've arrived safely. Allow me to welcome you. I'm Matthew Kane. Oh, how do you do? I must admit, when a luncheon was mentioned, I, well, I was expecting... To be taken to a small restaurant <laughs> or a banquet room? Oh, no, no, no. This is too important a moment to be held in mundane surroundings. Uh, you've met my sister, Miss Agatha Kane? Well, no, no, not, not formally. How do you do, ma'am? If uh, you'll both excuse me... As I've me, told I... you, Agatha, this is Mr. Schiller. He's come to visit with us and have a bite of lunch. Would you do the honors, my dear? Ludwig will help. But give Mr. Schiller and me a chance to get acquainted first. Yes, Kane. I will go and find Ludwig. Ah, unfortunately, she's a little addled, I'm afraid. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, no, since you're the first to arrive... May I suggest a little brandy to warm you from the dampness of the weather? Oh, yes, yes, yes. That'll be fine. I took the liberty of pouring as you arrived. Your drink is here, on the side table. Oh, I see you're admiring that magnificent old portrait over the mantel. My grandfather, sir. A man who gloried in our judicial system. Spent his life exacting justice. A godly man who believed in the holy words, an eye for an eye. He has a magnificent face. Yes. He's been dead for over 50 years now, but his presence is still felt in this house. Well, here's to you, sir. Thank you. 
sit down, Mr. Sheldon. The others will be here shortly. Sit down and tell me about your day in court. You had an able lawyer. Oh, one of the best. I can't speak highly enough of Warren Douglas. Clever. Yes, very clever. But then, criminal lawyers must be exceptionally clever. Most of the time, they're paid to defend the guilty. <laughs> but I, I meant no inference in your case. It's just a generalization. That's all right. I'm not sensitive. I was exonerated. Yes, yes, I heard. It was a murder case, was it not? Accidental manslaughter. Oh, oh yes, yes, yes. Forgive me. I, I'm sorry to say I don't follow all the cases I should. Uh, this was something about a fight in a bar room, wasn't it? Mm, the Carlton Lounge. Now, I was waiting for my wife. We were to have lunch that afternoon. There was this man, a complete stranger. He was annoying a woman at the bar I intervened. One word led to another. I, I hardly remember the struggle that followed, but somehow he fell over backwards against a glass door and shattered it. One of the glass livers pierced his throat. He died almost instantly. Oh, how dreadful. Yes. Yes, it, it was. One minute, sitting quietly, worrying about how much my wife spent on a shopping spree, and, well, the next... We are at the mercy of circumstances, are we not, Mr. Schiller? Oh, let me fill your glass again. I was just wondering about the others. I mean, it's getting rather late. The judicial system and its failings have become quite a passion with me. Several years ago, my sister and I had occasion to attend a criminal court's trial... I'll never forget the sight of the man's face as he stood to receive the jury's verdict. He stood there, quivering with fear, awaiting the foreman's voice to pronounce him guilty. And suddenly, oh, I suppose the strain was too much for him. The poor fellow pitched forward on his face, fell dead where he stood. Dead? Good Lord. Yes. Imagine that. And what do you suppose the jury's verdict was? Not guilty. The man lying dead at their feet there. Yeah. Well, retributive justice has a strange way of finding its mark sometimes. Well, I'd hardly call it justice if they found the man innocent, as you said. I found him guilty. Well, he was dead at any rate. You found him guilty? Yes, Mr. Schiller. We all judge our fellow man. You pick up a newspaper, read of a trial, decide a man's guilt or innocence over your morning coffee or toast. Don't deny it. Yeah, well, well, to some extent, I suppose we do. To some extent? Did you hear that, Agatha? Well, now, there is some reasonableness to you, certainly, if you can admit that. Now then, let me ask you this, Mr. Schiller. Do you think, with all the legions of lawyers, clever lawyers with silver tongues, that certain inequities of justice are sometimes meted out by juries? Do some innocent men hang? Unquestionably, sir. Then you would also admit that some of the guilty go free. Is that not so, Mr. Schiller? Uh, oh, uh, uh, I, I don't... I don't... I don't feel well. My... My, my, my head... Uh, Look, I, I was hoping the others would be here by now. Do you think we should give Mr. Douglas a call? Perhaps there's been a misunderstanding. There's been no misunderstanding, Mr. Schiller. Mr. Douglas was never notified. There's no one else coming. And the misunderstanding was mine. I, I, I thought you said that there was to be a surprise luncheon for Mr. Douglas to celebrate... Did you put something in my drink? Yes, Mr. Schiller. Why? I, I, I don't understand. Why did you do it? Oh, oh, Mr. Kane, oh, please, please, I, I can't. Sleep well, Mr. Schiller. Ludwig and I will attend to everything. Ludwig! Ludwig, come! We have work to do. Ken! Ken! Here, Agatha. I'm here. Mr. Schiller. Where is Mr. Schiller? Justice has been served. It is finished. Oh, Kane. Kane. Your coat. 
your new coat. What have you stained it with? I think it's blood. I was attempting... Don't tell me. I don't want to know what you do with them. Please, Kane. I don't want to know. I, I don't want to know. Well, there is no doubt that justice in the minds of men can take many forms. Who is to say what is true justice? The charge against the defendant was manslaughter. Well, I guess each man has his own rationalization for justice as he sees it. But just as no man may place himself above the law, so no man may appoint himself the oracle of judgment and truth. It seems, however, that Matthew Kane has done so. I'll return shortly with Act Two. Forty-eight hours have passed since the disappearance of Charles Schiller. His wife, Karen, has been summoned to headquarters to discuss the incident with the police. The request is rather unusual considering that over 3,000 cases of missing persons are reported in an average-sized metropolitan city each month. Police files bulge with triplicates of these reports. But the case of Charles Schiller has caught the eye of Detective Sergeant Steiner. Something about this case has activated the trail dog instinct. Steiner is sure he is on to something. I appreciate your checking into this, Sergeant. Of course, I don't want to raise your hopes too high, Mrs. Schiller. I I mean, around here, lots of times, one and one comes out three. Yes, I understand, Sergeant. But how can I help? Well, as I understand it, according to our records, Mr. Schiller's lawyer was never informed of any testimonial luncheon in his honor or any meeting that day of yes, any I, kind. I spoke to Warren, Mr. Douglas, and, and well, he knew nothing about it, but I'm sure he told you that, too. Yes, uh, yes, he did. I have his statement right here. I'm sorry to put you through all this again, Mrs. Schiller, but you see, after your husband's disappearance, the facts related to it were run through our computer. Our statistical department on a hunch of mine came through with something rather interesting. Something I'd like to pursue with you, if I may. Certainly. What is it? Well, Mrs. Schiller, it, it seems that the circumstances that surround your husband's disappearance have been repeated three other times. All within the last seven months. I'm afraid I don't, I don't follow. What I'm trying you. to say is, three men, three other men have vanished over the past seven months. And the one thing these three men had in common was they disappeared immediately after having stood trial for murder. Well, what does that have to do oh, wait with... Wait a minute. Now, just a moment. More of a coincidence yet. Each of these men was found not guilty at his trial. Look here. David Swan, charge of first-degree murder seven months ago, October, not guilty. Man named Bates, manslaughter, not guilty. Collins, manslaughter, not guilty. <laughs> you see the pattern? Mm. Trial, exoneration, disappearance. Unusual, isn't it? And you think that my husband's disappearance has, has something to do with these other men? For now, let's just say he fits the pattern. You know, I've looked all through his file, this file here, dozens of times. Now, there's just one little piece missing. Did someone, anyone, see the man who picked your husband up that day on the limousine? No. I told the man who took the report. I was out shopping. Oh, yes, yes, here it is. And Jimmy was out. Jimmy? Well, that's my son. He's eight. Oh. He was at the schoolyard playing with his friends. Didn't I mention that? No, no, there's uh, no mention here of your son. Oh? Hmm. This uh, boy of yours, Jimmy, uh, could he have come home while you were out? Well, I suppose I... I never thought to ask. Well, we have a treehouse in the backyard. He and his friends often play there. This uh, treehouse? Does it face the street? You mean the front driveway? Yes, but... Mrs. Schiller, where is your son now? He's in school. He'll be home at three. Uh. Do you think there's something that Jimmy might know that... Possible. Possible, Mrs. Schiller. You know, all we need is one lead. Mm. 
Mr. Schiller. Wake up, Mr. Schiller. It's time to rise and shine. Uh, what? Kane? Exactly, Mr. Schiller. Kane. Matthew Kane. Where am I? What is this place? Your room is high above the ground on the far side of the estate. Room? This isn't a room. It's a cage. So it is, Mr. Schiller. What is this? Barred window, steel door? It's like a prison cell. It is a prison cell, Mr. Schiller. But why? Why am I here? To serve your sentence. I've judged your case and found you guilty. No. Well, it's all very well and good to say no. But here you are, aren't you? Here they all are. And here they'll stay until their brains rot and their bodies decay. They? You mean there are others? Yes, Mr. Schiller. There are others. Others who have broken God's law and must pay for it. Here, Mr. Schiller. Here are your rations for the day. You can't keep me here, Kane. My wife will go to the police. She's probably notified them already. Oh, I'm sure she has. I'm sure the others have wives and loved ones who have reported these unfortunate incidents to the police. You have disappeared, sir. Vanished into thin air. It's as simple as that. Not in this day and age. They'll find me. They have ways. Give it a year. Collins thought that way once. So did Swan. And the others. Give it time. We'll see. And now, if you'll excuse me, I must take these trays down the corridor. It's getting rather late. I'm due in court in an hour. There's an interesting case I must keep up with. When one is given the responsibility to judge his fellow man, one must be thorough in order to be fair. Cain! Come back! Cain! Someone, someone will come. They'll find me. They'll find me. Well, I'm glad you could bring Jimmy to see me, Mrs. Schiller. When he said that he was in the treehouse and saw his daddy leave in a big black car... This could be the lead we've been looking for. Now, are you uh, comfortable in that chair, Jimmy? Yes, sir. Ah, good. Now, you keep looking through this picture book. I don't understand how a children's book of cartoons... They're types, Mrs. Schiller. Tall, oh. thin, wiry, heavy, muscular. And the clothes they wear, all geared to pinpoint a suspect. Now, Jimmy, do you see anyone in there who looks like the man you saw from the treehouse? Um, not exactly, but... He looks something like this one, huh? only he's wearing kind of a uniform, like a soldier. Tall, thin, in uniform. Now, let's see. Mm. Uniforms, uniforms. Ah, here we are. Now, Jimmy, was he a soldier, like this one? Uh, no. Or, uh, wait a minute, uh, how about this one? That's it, that's it, and he had a hat on. Like this one, right? Yeah, that's the one. But it, it wasn't black, it was gray, like Bobby's cat. Now, anything else you noticed about him, Jimmy? No, sir. Mrs. Schiller, we've got ourselves a suspect. Does that mean you can find my daddy? It means we have a better chance. At least we know one of the men we're looking for is a chauffeur. And we have some idea of what he looks like. Now, excuse me, Mrs. Schiller. Rodriguez, I want a composite made up of uh, the Schiller case. Get the artist in here. Oh, and I'll need two men from Homicide. We're going to stake out that courthouse. I want a careful surveillance on limousines that pull up. I'll be going along. I'm bringing Schiller's wife and boy with me. Oh, you uh, will allow Jimmy to come along, won't you? We'll see that he's kept out of danger. Of course, Lieutenant. Oh, I don't mind danger. If I can help find my daddy. Oh, Jimmy. <laughs> Good morning, Agatha. Good morning. There was hammering and pounding near my room this morning, Kane. Yes, we're building a new cell. A new cell? There's another court case today. 
Murder one. I don't want to hear about it. You can't shut out the world, Agatha. And please, get that dog of yours off the chair. I've told him over and over. I'll get him, Kane. You hurt him when you pick him up. He's so tiny. I hate small things. Small minds, small people. Take him out. And come right back. We'll be leaving for the courthouse as soon as Ludwig brings the limousine out front. Oh, I can't go today. There's a flower show at the Civic Auditorium. Mrs. Eustace is picking me up this afternoon. You've asked her to come here? Oh, I I won't invite her in. I'll be ready when she arrives. Oh, Kane, when is all this going to stop? You loved Grandfather, Agatha. You know what he stood for. You know how I've worked and planned and dedicated my life. We won't stop. We'll never stop as long as there's breath left in me. Why do you do this to me? I don't like losing my temper. You know I don't. Ah, Ludwig's ready. Since you are going to be home, feed the prisoners. Prisoners? Oh, I, I, I don't know where they are. You know where they are, Agatha. I've seen you sneaking around, watching Ludwig and me go up the narrow stone steps of the gatehouse. But the keys, I, I don't know where you keep... You don't need keys. You'll find the trays in the kitchen. Fill them. Slide one under each cell. I'll expect it to be done when I return. Uh, yes, Kane. Well, I must hurry off to the courthouse. When a man's life is at stake, one must be fair. <laughs> That's the courthouse, Jimmy. Over there, across the street. Oh, gee, it's a big place. And there's so many people. Oh, just looking for one, Jimmy, the chauffeur, the man who took your daddy away. Do you think you can recognize him from here? Well, I'll try, Mom. Good, Jimmy. Now, we'll just sit here in the car and wait. This is a special murder trial. I think our suspect will be here. Now, you understand, Mrs. Schiller, I'm... I'm not making any predictions. We understand, Sergeant. The way things have been going, this may be our only chance. Mr. Schiller? Mr. Schiller? Uh, yes? Yes, who, who is that? I have brought you some food, Mr. Schiller. Miss Agatha, what are you, what are you doing Kane here? Kane left the house. He asked me to feed the uh, prisoners... I'll just slip your tray under the cell door. There. Can you reach it? Yes, but... Good. Then I'll just move on and... No, 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 wait. Wait, I must talk to no, you. No, I can't. I have the others to feed. I left my little dog downstairs. I told him, stay. But he never listens. <laughs> oh. <laughs> See, there he comes. Oh, he's so naughty. Chin, chin, I told you not to follow me up here. Cain would be so angry if he knew. Oh, dear. He's crawled under your cell door, Mr. Schiller. He's going after your food. Oh, do grab him quickly, Mr. Schiller, please. Ah, that's it. Ah, thank you. I'll take him now. Oh, no. Oh, no, you can't do that, Miss Agatha. Oh, what? Now, we're both prisoners here. Your dog and I. Both prisoners? Until you get the keys. Oh, Mr. Schiller, there's no need to do that. You see, you can just pass Chin Chin through the bars. He's all fluff. He'll pass through easily. Oh, Mr. Schiller, you're hurting him. May I have my little dog, please? Yes, yes, Miss Agatha. <sighs> Thank you. As soon as you get the keys. Well, I can't do that. You're Kane's prisoner. And your dog is my prisoner. Oh, please, give me my dog. He never did anything to you. Oh, well, that's unfortunate. But look around you. Look what your brother did to me and the others. Locked us in these stinking cells to satisfy his insanity. Mr. Schiller, you must understand. My brother is not insane. The reason he does what he does... But there's no is... time for that. Now, either you get those keys, or I'll snap this oh. little dog's neck. No, no, you, you wouldn't do that. 
I swear to you, no, I'll no, kill him this no, instant Mr. unless you do as but I say. I don't know anything about the keys. Find them. Oh, please, Mr. Schiller, give me my door. The keys, Miss Agatha. I'm running out of patience. Get the keys. <laughs> Yes, the mind of man is a fragile thing. There is little doubt that Charles Schiller has reached the breaking point. It has been said that desperate men are capable of desperate deeds. Will the frightened Miss Agatha find the courage to release her brother's prisoner in exchange for the life of her dog? I'll return shortly with Act Three. gone by since the arrival of the police stakeout at the courthouse entrance. Sergeant Steiner has been in constant touch with the unmarked cars he has strategically placed around the building. Sitting with him are Karen and Jimmy, who has been keeping a close watch on various limousines that have come and gone. So far, nothing. Steiner's face is grim. He has little hope to hold out to the anxious wife and child whose world has been darkened by the strange disappearance of Charles Schiller. I've just checked with units two and four. They've got the rear entrance under surveillance. No sign of a limousine or chauffeur back there. Well, we're doing what we can, but... I understand, Sergeant. But our real hope is Jimmy here. He saw the man before. He's the only one who can make a positive identification. Well... Anything new, Jimmy? He did see someone a little while ago that he thought could be the man. One of one of the chauffeurs waiting there across the street. Yeah, you were busy talking on the radio. Well, you should have cut in. Where? Which one? Well, he's gone now. No, wait. Huh? There he is over there at that big black car. The limousine? Yeah, he's helping that big fat man get into the back seat. Are you sure that's the man you saw from the treehouse? Well, I wasn't before, but but I am now. You see how he bends over kind of stiff when he opens the door? Uh-huh. Well, that's how the man bent over when he helped Dad into the car at our house. Well, that's good enough for me. The car's starting up. They're going to leave. Well, let's hurry up and capture him. No, no, Jimmy. We're not going to capture him. Why not? We're going to follow him. He's the only link we have to your dad. Control one. To all stakeout units. Limousine. License number GNC. 918. Pulling away from curb in front of courthouse. Suspect at wheel. Heading east on third. Taylor. He's turning, sir. Heading for your grid, Unit 4. Pick up as he passes. Units 2 and 5. Follow on parallel course. Move it. 10 4. Miss Agatha? Miss Agatha! Uh I'm here, Mr. Schiffer. I'm looking for the key. Oh, well, keep looking. <laughs> oh, you, you, you shut up. I'm not going to hurt you. I just want to get out of this madhouse. <laughs> Miss Agatha. Oh, wait, wait. Here they are. I found them. See, I found the keys. They were back there in this small storage room. You can have them. All of them. Oh, just give me my dog. No, no, not so fast. Try them in the lock first. Uh, all right. All right. But please, be careful. Chin Chin is so delicate. The lock, Miss Agatha. I'm trying, Mr. Schiller. But there are so many. They're all rusty. And most of them are too big. Oh, God. Try, try that one. I, There's no it, rust on it at all. Oh, it, oh. It fits. Hurry. Oh. Now, you're sure it's right for me to do this? My brother will be back any minute. Damn and... your brother. Do you want your dog handed to you in one piece or don't you? Oh, oh, oh yes, yes. Now, please, don't hurt him. I, I'll do just as you say. There. You're free, Mr. Schiller. Thank the Lord. Now, release my dog. Here, take him. Careful. Don't drop him, Mr. Schiller. Oh, now look what you've done. He's getting away. Chin Chin, you come back here this instant. This very oh, instant. Forget about him. I've got to get out of here. Which way do I go? Oh, here, Chin Chin. Good little Chin Chin. Miss Agatha, wait. I can't. I'd better find poor Chin Chin right away. 
Oh, it's so easy to get lost in this endless maze of oh, horror. Damn you, Miss Agatha, come back! Come back! I don't see the limousine anymore, Lieutenant. You don't think we lost them? No, Mrs. Schiller, they're up ahead. Unit 4 is keeping them in sight. A control to Unit 4. Control to Unit 4. I've got him. Suspect turning off onto the old Belmont Road, heading for private driveway. All units, all units, converge on driveway. Do not use sirens. We'll wait for you there. 10-4. Why are we stopping? I don't want to get too close. But we'll lose them. They just turned into the driveway. Can't we follow them? I'm afraid not, Jimmy. The driveway on that old estate back there is private property. Private property? But my husband may be there. We can't go any farther without a warrant. What's that? Permission, Jimmy, oh. to search the place. The other car should be along any minute. You flag them down, son. I'll take care of the red tape. Control one to central. Control one to central. Request the search warrant. Private residence. 1143. 1143 Belmont Road. Residence name unknown. Try through vehicle registration. License number GNC 918. Repeat. GNC 918. Agatha, will you please stop blubbering like a child and tell me what's happened? Well, it was just a few minutes ago, Kane. I'm sure you and Ludwig can find him and bring him back. Find who? Bring who back? Mr. Schiller. Schiller? <laughs> well, he he forced me to let him out of his cell. He what? Well, you see, he had Chin Chin. He said he would break the poor little dog's neck if I didn't get the keys. You so gave I... him the keys? Well, I, I opened his door... Then left them in the lock. I had to go after Chin Chin. Ludwig, quickly. The cells. I'll get the rifle. You fool, Agatha, you fool. Oh, sorry, Kane. I know I shouldn't have. The cells, Agatha. Where does Ludwig keep the shotgun shells? No, no, Kane. Put away the gun. Disobedience must be met with force. Justice, Agatha. Justice. Justice? I have seen your prison cells, Kane. Those poor, unfortunate men living like caged animals. You call that justice? No, get out of my way. Those men must not escape. Too late, Kane. Shella, I've already released them. Do you realize what you've done? Those men are half crazed. I suggest we all stay here. It's a lot safer than out there. I've warned you, brother. Stop before it is too late. I must stop them. I must. Oh! Right, the other prisoners are here. Run, Nobody Miss Agatha. Go. Run. Stop. Over all of you. You're breaking the law. I'll not stand for a breach of justice. Those noises we heard, Sergeant, I'm sure they're coming from the house. Sounds like a Mrs. Schmidt. Shotgun blast. There's trouble up ahead. It sounds like it's moving this way. No need to wait for that warrant now. All right, pull up, men. That gunfire is coming from the left. Rodriguez, Gordon, cover me. I'm going in. Mr. Schiller, you'd better wait back here with Jimmy. And keep down, out of range. We will, Sergeant. This way. This way, Miss Agatha. Uh, Keep running. Uh, I can see the road uh, from here. I'm trying, Mr. Schiller. I don't know what got into my brother. He's never been a violent man. Oh, he's still out there uh, somewhere. Uh, firing uh, wildly at anything. Uh, moves. Oh, those men. Do, do you think he, he killed them? Look, it's no time uh, to think about anything no. now. Just, just keep running. Uh, I can't. I I just can't go on any farther. It's all right, Miss Agatha. Uh, look. Uh, look up ahead. Uh, Uniformed men. Uh, it's the police. Uh, Hold your fire, men. There's someone up ahead. Uh, it looks like... Yeah, it is. It's Charles Schiller. Oh, thank God you found us. We couldn't have gone much further. You are Charles Schiller? Oh, yes, yes, yes. And this is Miss Agatha Kane. Yes. Her brother Matthew is back there, armed with a shotgun. You know, you better come with me. You'll both be safer back there on the road. Get away from that man. Kane! He's an escaped prisoner. I'll shoot the first man who touches him. Careful. He's deranged. He's been holding chained men captive at the house. Put down that shotgun, Mr. Kane. I am in charge here. 
Tell your men to back off. I'm warning you, sir, for the last time. Schiller, hands on your head. We're returning to the cell. It's no use, Kane. It's all over. If you pull that trigger, you'll be murdering an innocent man. I was innocent, Kane. They were all innocent. That's a lie. I judged you all fairly. I see now I was too lenient with my sentence. Now that you dare defy me, I change my verdict. Your sentence is no longer life. It's death. Shut up, look out! Oh! 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 Gain! Gain! Oh! Oh! My... My poor brother. Oh. You've shot him. Oh. Sorry, ma'am. I, oh. I had no choice. Oh. Uh, yes, uh. Oh. yes, Kane. I'm here. I, I was only trying. I know, Kane. I tried to warn you to stop before it was too late. Oh, you're too easy on them. Okay. Too quick to forgive the people. The jurors, they're all like you. <coughs> Someone has to uphold the rightness of things. <laughs> he's... He's gone. Cain. Oh, Cain. <laughs> he put me through hell, Sergeant. <laughs> But you know something? I can't help feeling what he did was partly our fault. Our fault? Yes. Crazy as it may sound, there is some logic to his madness. Well, Matthew Kane is no longer with us. I, for one, am saddened by his untimely death. I was beginning to like him. I always did admire a man who is dedicated to his work. And talking about a man who is dedicated to his work, listen. We hope we didn't frighten you with our story tonight. It's true, Matthew Kane was a psychopath. And he did have quite a successful prison franchise operating on his dark and dismal estate. But fortunately, Sergeant Steiner arrived on the scene in time to stop him from opening branch offices all over the country. So, dear listeners, you all will be safe in your beds until I return. Our cast included Alan Hewitt, Jordan Charney, Augusta Dabney, Evie Juster, and Jim Dukas. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. <laughs>